we're going to explore processing data from the Geometrics TVG transfer gradiometer to, pre <coughs> to make a presentation using uh, software available on Geometrics website. Uh, the software and Geometrics website will automatically make plates from your interpretation of the data. And this video uh, shows the steps necessary to prepare a set for that processing. So we start by opening MagPick. And using File, Profiles, Simple Load to load a data set from a, a TVG magnetometer system. Click Add. We're going to choose a file. Open the file. And now the, this part of the processing is like normal uh, MagPick processing of, of uh, standard data sets. We're going to start with Mag1, so we'll get the, the longitude and latitude for Mag1. Choose Mag1 as our data. Depth will come from Depth 1, which is Mag1's depth. Altitude will come from MAG-1. On most TVG data sets, MAG-1 altimeter is the only altimeter in the system. Check the box to use time. Choose Auto Short UTM if you have, lat if you have uh, geographic locations. Most systems will, will record with geographic locations. Click OK. Click OK. Now we have set up for the first magnetometer, and we'll click the button Add Channel to add the second magnetometer. We're going to choose Mag2 Longitude and Latitude. We're going to choose Mag2 as the magnetometer device. Depth 2 and the altitude will be Altitude 1. Everything else remains the same. We can say OK. And now we can load the data. The number of lines loaded should be the number of lines surveyed. In this case, 19 profiles were loaded, and the survey did contain 19 lines. File, New. Grid view to display grid locations. File, new, profile view to display profile information. Most of our work will be done with profile location, with profile data. Then once a profile window is open, file browse to open a file browser so that we can examine and do interpretation on different lines of data as we're displaying now. Once we have the file browser window uh, turned on, uh, we can get ready to start uh, the interpretation. Our first step will be to remove DC bias in the traces and to do that, we're going to click on Edit, Remove DC Offset. We're going to uh, do All Profiles Global, and the reference channel will be Channel 1. We'll say OK. And we can see the amount of offset that's being calculated to be removed uh, from, from uh, the uh, channel 2 or added to channel 2 to get the DC offset to a minimum. And we can click Save As if we want to make a text file that has the, this information for uh, future processing or future examination of the data. 
I'm going to use the default name, dcprotocol.txt. And we will close. And now the green line shows what's going to, what's going to be our uh, DC offset. We can zoom for a closer look. Right click, choose zoom, drag your mouse over an area, and you can see the difference that will, that will be made when we uh, do this calculation. So right click, redraw, right click, select to turn off the zoom tool, and now we can say edit, accept, and we're going to say all profiles, smooth, okay. And now we have profiles with, uh, with DC offset removed. And I can browse and look at the uh, various profiles to verify that indeed the uh, DC offset is minimum. Come back to the top, to the first one. The next step is to create a directory or folder for interpretation results. Click on uh, Windows Explorer and choose a location for your interpretation results. In this case, I'm going to put the interpretation in a folder underneath the, the uh, data folder. There's our interpretation folder. And we can minimize this window. To start, we will select an anomaly and zoom to expand it on the screen. Right click, zoom, drag to expand it. If you don't like the expansion, right click, redraw, and either pick a different region or pick a different anomaly to, uh, to process. In this case, we'll pick another anomaly to process. We'll go from here to here, and we're going to process this small anomaly. Right click, set marker, Set a marker at one side of the anomaly and another marker on the other side of the anomaly. The markers must each point at the same color trace. If you set a marker on the red trace, the other marker has to be on the red trace. Once you've set the first two markers, we click Inverse, Run. We're going to uncheck the box, Use All Default Parameters. Make sure the Use IGRF for Earth Field box is checked. Check the Create Protocol.dat file in the inversion folder and select the inversion folder choose an estimate for the source depth. The estimate should be as close as you can guess to the source depth. Once you've done that you can click OK and 
we can see the results in the, in the uh, dipole spreadsheet. Once we've made all our picks, we can open the dipole sheet. And of course, your dipole sheet will be uh, will have probably more entries than this one. This is just for, to uh, to explain the procedure. And we're going to choose File, Create Protocol with the sheet with the, the sheet open. And we're going to create a full protocol for GMT of profile results. And we can, we can click on the three dotted button to the, next to the output name and choose our own output name and put it in the correct location. In this case, uh, the, the parent the directory of the interpretation directory would be satisfactory. Okay. We can also cross-reference targets if we, have an, if we have a number of targets. In that case, you check the box for cross-reference targets and choose an appropriate radius. Uh, usually the radius would be approximately the line spacing or perhaps just a bit more than the line spacing. Okay, and We've exported our two targets, and we've completed the beginning part of making a plate. From this point, we can make a map so that, uh, so that we can have a, a, a shaded map on our uh, on our plates, we can either make a analytic signal map or we can make a straight uh, magnetic field map. So I'm going to minimize some of these windows. We'll turn off the browse window for the moment and to make map, we click on the grid view, click on the menu item profiles, choose interpolate grid, choose a, t a, a type of interpolation. In this case, we'll use splines. We're going to use an interval that is approximately one half the line spacing, these lines were about 10 meters. So we're going to choose 5 meter by 5 meter grid interval. Set on data limits, uh, 2500 iterations, tension uh, 0.25 is good. We're going to filter the data by median, median value. And now we'll choose an output file. It's a good idea to put the grid interval and other really important information about the grid in the name of the file, especially if you're going to do uh, reiterative uh, work. I'm going to save the file. The format is netcdf, which is, which is somewhat important for us. We'll say OK. We've made a small map. So now we can increase the, si the size of the map. Option size, three, four, six. We'll choose an arbitrary increase in size. C 
see what our picture looks like. If we are satisfied with our picture, then in our picture size, then we can go to operations, increase resolution, and we can choose either bilinear or spline. In this case, I'll choose spline. Here's a map. Now, with increased resolution on the contours, part of the map has no, da no survey lines. In the northwest uh, corner, there's no survey lines, and part of, the, part of the west side of the map has no survey lines. We can correct this situation by grid clipping. We can clip on profiles. We're going to choose a grid clipping radius slightly larger than the line spacing. We'll choose uh, 12 meters. I say OK. We're going to choose channels 1, 2 since we do have uh, two magnetometers. Say OK. And now we have a map with the grid clipped to the area where, the, where there are actually profiles. Once the map has been created and uh, satisfactory, we need to export the map using File, File, Save Export Grid. We're going to give it a name that says full UTM as part of the name just to let us know that this is the one that, that we're going to upload. And we say save and then we choose net CDF full UT, UTM from the format window. And we're now finished with preparation of data set for making plates. Now that we've prepared a set of data, we can open a web browser and we can browse to http double slash tvg data dot geometrics dot com and this brings us to the web page that will take us through uploading data to, to make plates. And there are some instructions available on the website and there's a link to the latest copy of MagPick which are sometimes necessary. And on the website is a sample of the type of plate that is, uh, can be uh, generated automatically from TV, process TVG data. And finally is a section to fill in uh, uh, your information and, and uh, 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 point to the files to upload. If you have a company logo, you can browse, find our logo to upload, and click open. We'll need to, we need to uh, use the inversion protocol. We'll browse. And we'll browse to where we were processing data.
and find our protocol file. Usually sensor 1 is starboard or right and sensor 2 is port or left. If your wiring on your TVG frame has been modified, uh, you can click on a radio button to change these uh, orientation. We can browse for our grid file. And that's the full UTM grid file. And now for shading we can we can provide scale, uh, light source azimuth, and light source elevation, uh, although the default will probably work okay. Finally, you can upload a side scan image if you happen to have a side scan image uh, of, the, uh, of the area, and uh, uh, optional color palette, although the TVG full UTM file does contain the color pal palette. So once we've filled out this uh, online form, we click the submit button. And we'll get a little message telling us that our files are uploaded and the names of the files. And we can, uh, we can uh, save, save this page if we, want to, uh, if we want to be reminded and we will get an email soon telling us that our plates are ready for review. Contact information can be found on our website at www.geometrics.com or simply call us at 408-954-0522.